Thank you for considering DevExpress ASP.NET controls and MVC extensions for your software development needs. In this demo, we'll cover all the basics of customizing the ASPX grid view, starting from dropping the control onto the form and binding it to data, to diving deeper into the overview of design time and runtime features. We're starting with a basic one-page application created with the DevExpress ASP.NET Project Wizard. First, let's add the grid view to your ASP.NET page from the Visual Studio Toolbox. You'll find it under the DX, the version you have installed, here it's 12.2, data and analytics category. Or you can also use the search toolbox feature and type the name of the control. Many DevExpress ASP.NET controls are prefixed with the ASPX tag. Now you can drag and drop the control on your page. Let's move on to the next step. To data bind it, click the grid view smart tag and choose the new data source option. You can data bind to any of the standard Microsoft data sources, DevExpress data sources, and anything that returns an IEnumerable interface. Select SQL Data Source and click OK. Let's create a new SQL connection. I'll connect with my local SQL Server Express database and select the Northwind database. Then save the connection. Now from the products table, let's select the product ID, product name, unit price, units in stock, units on order, and discontinued fields. Next, click the Advance button and check the Generate Insert, Update, and Delete Statements checkbox. This generates the SQL statements that will allow the grid to modify the database records. Then click Next, test the query, and click Finish. And that's it. We now have a new SQL data source that is bound to the grid view in about a minute. So let's take a look at this in the browser. We have a beautiful and functional grid control that fits easily into an existing ASP.NET project. The grid allows you to instantly page through the data using the built-in pager. You can sort the data in ascending or descending order by clicking on the column header, and even provide multiple column sorting. You can also move any column by dragging it to another location. Now, let's move on to the next step. The ASPX grid view provides you a quick way to get started with powerful features. Let's add some more features to the grid. Let's take a look at the handy smart tag that allows you to enable and configure powerful features easily. We can enable grouping, editing, inserting, row selection, deleting, and filtering. The grid's UI is automatically adjusted for you as these features are enabled. Next, let's explore the Columns Editor. This dialog allows you to customize the columns in detail. The toolbar at the top allows you to insert, delete, and modify the column types. Choose from one of the many column editor types like check, combo box, date, image, and text columns. Let's replace the Units on Order column. First, let's remove it. Now we'll insert a new column type, Spin Edit, which gives us a spin editor which is great for editing numeric values as we'll see in a moment. Now I'll set the field name property to Units on Order, and it will be data bound to our field in the database table. I'll also move the Unit Price column down and set its Display Format String property to C. This will display the Unit Price column as a currency value. Now let's explore the Properties pane. The ASPX grid view has a very intuitive design, so you can find and set a property with ease. For example, the Accessibility Compliant property helps you to set the grid's accessibility feature. The Appearance category of properties allows you to control the look. The Behavior properties allow you to modify the overall feel of the ASPX grid view. For example, Enable Callbacks can be set to False so that the ASPX grid view uses postbacks instead of callbacks for interactions with the server. The data category allows you to manage the data source and fields in the ASPX grid view. I can also modify the ID. I'll set it to product grid view. The style properties allow me full control over the look of the ASPX grid view styles in case you want to modify or enhance one of the built-in themes. And the settings category lets you control many different aspects. For example, the settings text property lets me change or add specific text. 
Here I'll set the title text to product information. And to display this title, I'll set the show title panel property to true. Under the settings behavior, I can set the allow focused row to true. This will allow the end user to select a row by clicking it. Let's have the grid calculate for us a couple of total summaries about the data. Summaries are simple to add. First, let's show the footer area so we have a place for the summaries to be displayed. Then bring up the Totals Summary Editor. Add two total summaries. On one of them, set the field name to Product ID, Shown in column to Product ID, and Summary Type to Count. This will give us an overall count of the records in the grid. On the other summary, set the field name to Unit on Order, Shown in column to Unit on Order, and Summary Type to Sum. This will give us the sum total of all units on order. Now let's go to the source view. Here's the entire grid's code, including the columns and summaries we defined. You have access to the smart tag from the source view too. And you can set up the ASPX review the same way you can from the designer. For example, let's say I want to set the width of the grid. As I begin to type, I get IntelliSense, which shows me the available properties. Now I can set the width to 100 pixels or to 100% so that it'll fill the width of the element it's located in. Now let's add one more total summary. I'll copy the previous one and paste it below. Then I'll set the field name to Unit Price, shown in column to Unit Price, and Summary Type to Average. This will give us the average price of all units in the grid. I can also modify a column. Let's set a different header text for the units in stock column. I'll set the caption property to in stock. And finally, let's display the head filter for the columns. I'll set the show header filter button to true. Let's run our ASPX grid view in the browser again. Now our grid has multiple features. We have editing capabilities. So if I click Edit, it'll bring up an edit form that the grid automatically generates. And because we recreated the Units on Order column using a spin editor, we now have these nice buttons we can modify the value with using either the mouse, the keyboard, or manually entering in a value. Plus, when I click Update, that will automatically be saved against the back end using an AJAX callback that only refreshes the grid. I can also delete a record, or I can create a new one by clicking on the New button. And because we added the header filter option, this gives us all the unique values in each of the columns. So if I wanted to find the record for product ID number three, I can select that and easily bring it up. Also note when I click clear, it will clear out that header filter. We have the ability to use the filter row, as you can see, each column has a filter row I can specify records for. So for example, if I put in CH here, it will bring up only the records that begin with CH. And you'll notice that each time the records are filtered, the grid is updating the summary. When I click clear, we'll see we have our total records, the sum or unit orders, and the average unit price. Finally, let's look at the data grouping feature. If I want to find only discontinued items whose units on order are zero, the ASPX grid view lets me find that quickly. In this video, you've learned all the basics of ASPX grid view customization. While you're on our website, you can also check out countless training resources, including online demos, code examples, documentation, and more videos. Thanks for watching. Let's see what develops.